All right, today's video, we're going to be looking at the CSS column gap property. So remember the live code you can edit via the Scrimba link down in the description and follow along. All right, our next CSS tip comes in the form of the gap property. And this is similar to the previous tip and I'm gonna show you how it works right now. So you can see that I've just got a basic HTML set up here with three separate samples. And this all have to do with the gap property. And the first sample here, I have this one set up using CSS columns. In the second example, I have this one set up using the CSS grid. And in the last one, I have this group of divs down here set up using the CSS flexbox. So three different modern layout methods. And what I'm gonna show you here is we're gonna jump over to the CSS. You can see each of these just have a bunch of children divs inside of them to show how these work. So I've got a little bit of a boilerplate set up here just to kind of show some colors. But we're gonna start off here with the columns. So this is the one we just barely saw. So I can set the column dash gap property, and I'm gonna set this to something like, I don't know, 20 pixels. And you can see that gives me a 20 pixel gap in between those three columns. Now down here on the CSS grid, I can do the same thing, except the property name is called grid dash gap. And I'll set that just to be consistent here. I'll set that to uh, 30 pixels. Each of my elements are surrounded by a 30 pixel gap, both for the rows and the columns. And then down here in Flexbox, Flexbox is sort of the older layout method and it doesn't have a thing called gap until now. So we have this new property that's just simply called gap. And I'll set that to 30 pixels as well. And you can see now that creates a 30 pixel gap in between each of my flex box items, which was previously impossible. So all of these various properties that have a gap, like column gap, grid gap, they're all being replaced and just the new term is just going to be simply gap. And now gap also works with other layout methods like flexbox. So that's a really cool upgrade that you can add to your flexbox properties and you can start just using the gap as well. One last thing I do want to show you here on Flexbox is you can actually specify a difference between the rows and the columns. So I can say row dash gap, and I can set that to 30 pixels. Now you can't really see it here because there's only one row of these Flexbox items, but I can also set this to column gap. And the same thing works for the uh, grid layout as well. You can specify column and row gaps independently and have them be different sizes from one another. 